In five, four, three, two, one. This is Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents. Uh, of course, ways to follow the show is latenightparents.com. Full house tonight. Brian TX. Mr. B going? Jojo. Tony D is all in, in the house tonight. Gentlemen, how you doing? Chilla. Good, good, good. Good. Uh, I guess we start by talking about Uvalde, Texas. We want to note um, you know, love and support to the families of the 19 students and two teenagers that were killed in a mass shooting at an elementary school on Tuesday. The yeah. shooter, said by authorities to be an 18-year-old man who lived in the community, was killed by police at the scene. Robin Elementary School in Uvalde is about 85 miles west of San Antonio and 75 miles uh, from the Mexican border. Uh, this shooting recalls the December 2012 killing of 26 people, mostly young children, at Sandy Hook Elementary in Connecticut, which mobilized a lot of anti-gun violence advocates around the country. Uh, this Tuesday's attack is the second mass shooting in less than two full weeks. Um, a gunman killed 10 black shoppers and employees in Buffalo, New York, the supermarket on May 14th in what officials called a hate crime. Gentlemen, we'll start there. Sad, sad situation. Um, I know Tony's broadcast tomorrow, he's going to want to talk about... I guess getting behind the layers of the initial, we got to do something about guns. <laughs> We've heard so many different people sound off in all different uh, industries. And with a lot of help from Brian, he's been coaching me along the way. Um, I wouldn't blame one group. I blame the 100 senators because their inaction has allowed this to fester on and on and on. So it's easy to say GOP and Mitch McConnell. It's easy to say the Democrats and Chuck Schumer. I think they all have to find some and claim some ownership in all of this because we put them in office. Now, these views are solely mine and not of the three people that are also on the panel. So from that, I'll toss it to whoever would like to elaborate or embellish on this topic. All right, I'll go first. <clears throat> so I had a lot of a lot of my a lot of people and you know everybody on on the social live streams and also like people on my Snapchat who I still keep in contact with. So basically the main argument is, you know, oh, they allowed it. It's a, it's a political thing. So my take on it is this, no matter how much you want to restrict the gun laws, they will find a way to do it because Chicago has the strictest gun law, but yet it is still the number one murder capital in the country. So how does that make sense if you have the strictest gun law? Well, I'll tell you two things that I that I know of. One, you have the black market. Two, there's also people who would just say they'll go on offer up, let go eBay to say, hey, I'm selling my firearm. They don't do a background check. They're just like they pay you cash hand over fist. So and the thing about it is, too. And since, you know, firearms are that e easy accessible. So those are the only two ways that I know how that why people do what they do. Also, another take is the mental health of, a per of the person, because if a person plans on doing harm, they will accomplish it by any means necessary. Ergo, the Boston Marathon, the Carolina protest, the Orlando sh nightclub shooting, et cetera, et cetera. We could go on and on as well documented. So. To me, in my opinion, the gun laws don't matter because of the per the individual's mental state. If they want to do harm, they're going to carry it out regardless. So I see it more as a mental issue versus a political law issue. Okay. 
Take it, JoJo. Um, Dan. I kind of, I can kind of agree on that. Um, I will say though, you know, a lot of people want to just eliminate guns altogether. Um, that would be nice in a perfect world. That would be nice, but uh, people gotta protect themselves. You know what I mean? Is this Second Amendment, right? If I remember correctly, um, it is. Uh, it's a rocky slope. It's a rocky slope. But I sat and thought about that same exact thing, that black, you know, black market, the dark web, things like that. You know what I mean? Get rid of these hustlers, these street hustlers. A few years ago, look how much ammunition and guns they took away in, in Jersey City. It was an abandoned building. They had a whole bunch of dealers up in there. They took drugs, money, and a ton load of ammunition and guns from there. You know what I mean? It, it's crazy how people could just easily just hustle up randoms, you know what I mean? Scribble off serial numbers and all that stuff and just go sell to this person, that person. You got to check mental health, you know what I mean? Um, But you got to you gotta put the people at top, you know what I mean, to, to, to handle this. It's, it's ridiculous, and it's been going on for years and years and years. And, well, you know what I mean? As much as we want to just say, yo, no to guns, you got your right to defend yourself, to protect yourself, to protect your family. But you got to do these proper checks. You got to go from the ground up. And you just got to work, man. You got you to work for real because how long are we going to keep this going? Yeah, to, yeah, I agree. It's it, to me, it's like a never-ending cycle because yeah. when people want to talk about this, the the state laws and everything. Now, I don't know all the other state law requirements, but I will tell you from my experience of why I got into that world of firearms is yeah. because next month will mark ten years of my family tragedy, to where yeah. two men broke into my home, shot my brother, my biological brother, oh my God. and then and then killed my brother's best friend who was like my brother because he's known me since I was created. So he's pretty much my brother by association. Man. So they I shot my it. brother, they shot my brother and then killed, killed my other brother while he was asleep. And it happened like around between the realm between one to two in the morning. And then I was an ER tech at the time. And the way I found out was because my brother was my patient. Oh, so because of that incident, that's why I entered in the world of firearm. I got it a week later after I got done talking with homicides, social work, everything. Um, now, the only now, what I had to go through to get my firearm, I went to a sporting goods store, and I saw the gun I wanted because the gun that I that I I had no knowledge of whatever. I just got it because oh okay, this is a nine millimeter. All right, I know that's a common weapon, but I just got it because of the clip size. And what I had to do in order for me to buy it, I had to fill out 18 page packet questionnaire, everything, all federal, everything. So once I filled that out, I got fingerprinted on both hands, fingerprinted. And then the guy made the call. It took about two hours. And then boom, he said, all right, you've been approved. Everything's got calculated. You're now in the system. So that means when I'm in the system, I'm in the local like HPD data book, the state of Texas data book, the FBI, NSA, the federal government. So I'm registered. So it has my name with my gun serial number. So I'm in that database. So that's what I had to go through in order to get my firearm. Now, even at gun shows that we have frequently, even at the gun show, the guys have to do the same thing. They have a laptop. You have to do the same thing. Fill out the form because it is a legal it's a legal transaction. So they have to fill out the form, get fingerprinted, and yada yada yada. And if you already ha and if you have like a certain permit and everything, you submit if you're already a current gun owner, then you have to submit your number so that way they run that number check and go from there. It's just to acknowledge like, hey, you're purchasing another firearm. Now you have, you know, you're you're on record. So that's how we work in Texas. So I don't know how it is in other states. There was also old 
way of registering yourself for a weapon. And now it's a little bit easier, a little bit faster. I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, the situation is pretty personal to me, and one of the reasons why I wanted to address it is because children were killed. Yes. Yep. A man walked into an elementary school while they were in school. Let's be clear. Y'all know good and damn well. Ain't nobody in elementary school got a gun. Yeah. So now we got to address the mental health issue, like Brian said. Um, as a citizen, a veteran, and a father, that situation irritates me. What I would like to address when I do broadcast tomorrow will be gun laws from the federal level, state level, city level, county level, commonwealth level, republic level, parish level, all of it, as much as possible. We may not get through any and every aspect of it, but the more people that come in that can contribute from their state, their city, their county, their commonwealth, their parish, and their republic, the better wealth will be. And I'm also going to address the multi-jurisdictional permits. Just because you can take your gun to a different state doesn't mean you can carry it the way you think or use it the way you think. I don't think enough emphasis on gun laws is understood. I don't think definition is properly interpreted because people think yeah. they can do what they want to do. And there are a couple of gun safety rules to where you are wrong, whether you are registered or not, you do not understand. We need to look at what's going on with people. We need to understand what's happening with people. We need to pay more attention to what's going on with each other. Mm -hmm. Because situations like this are blindsided people. And as much as we want to blame the people who are higher up, who don't have time to deal with a bunch of us down here, it's happening to us. And we're still looking for them. We're yeah. always told in politics there's more of us than them, and they got to do what we need them to do. If they push the laws and they can only enforce them at a specific level, we still got to be able to take care of ourselves. I will see you all tomorrow on that. Appreciate it, Ted. Yeah, no, no doubt. I want to thank each of you for your your comments and uh, I'll just double double down on the fact that we are the ones that are putting these people in office. Mm -hmm. Yes. If we notice they are not doing what we are asking them to do, there's only one thing to do, vote them out of office. Yes. And that's, and that's not party specific. That's just us being Americans, us being human beings, and we and we say, okay, this makes no sense. Why aren't you doing something? You We're know, not a priority. Yeah, I think, I think there's only so much that they can do. Laws are written. Most of us break them. Just being honest. <laughs> There isn't, I, a law, there isn't a law that a bunch of us haven't broke. Just being right. real about it. You're not supposed to speed, we speed. You're not supposed to drink in public, people drink in public. You're not supposed to get in a fight, people fight. Yeah, How right. much are we going to take for ourselves? As much as we got to hold them accountable, we also got to hold ourselves as well. True. Yeah. So I'm not necessarily mad at, this, at the politicians, and I'm not going to say that they don't propose bills. <laughs> when we get to that level, there's a lot of proposals and not enough action. That's where you are correct about and and from my point, my go ahead, yeah. From my point of view, as far as like the pol political wise, it's just pretty much it's like who could piss off the other party more. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we're not a priority because <laughs> other other countries are a priority because they're invested in those other countries. We're not invested. Yeah. We're not. We're not a, an investment. I also see yeah. that. People buy the guns that are manufactured. The more guns that are used, the more of an effect you see that they have, the more people are going to want them. I hate to see that this is a sales pitch at the cost of children. And that goes for anything yeah. we use out here. Because a lot of what we use comes at the cost of children. We got a bigger yes. problem than what we think out here. Yes, we do. And all of this needs to be looked at and addressed, honestly. Sure. Yeah. And then, and then also to to that point, how when people want to analyze how many weapons have been purchased within the last two years, well, mm -hmm. think about it. A lot of people got desperate. They lost their job. They're trying to support the family. So yeah, so they bought a gun to go rob people just so they could stay afloat. That was also that was also a thing too. You said two years. I'm going to say the past three elections. 
After, that's, after the last three elections, they said gun sales went up. That's that okay. That's a fair assessment, but I'm yes. just saying. I'm just saying overall because of the pandemic, people at unemployed, you know, people standing in the food line for hours on end. Yeah. So people got desperate. So yeah. So people bought firearms to take it, you know, to protect their families and themselves, and other people bought it for other reasons to, you know, to do cr- criminal acts. Yeah. So. Um. So yeah. So. That's what my opinion too of why people are the way they are, like more now than it was ever. Scared. Yeah, yeah it's fear. Scared to change. Scared to change. Losing the old way, don't want to deal with the new way. The new way is going to cost them. Scared. Yeah, man. And that's going through the past two elections, regardless of who you voted for. A bunch of you that watch the news and can quote people, y'all know I ain't lying. When Obama was in, they bought guns. When he got reelected, they bought more guns. Then when Trump came in, they got guns. Now Biden's here, they also want to keep buying guns. And they're using them wrong. They're using them wrong. Yeah. I- I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Life's so crazy. Motherfuckers can 3D print guns. Look how crazy Thank that you. is. <laughs> Thank you. Like, yo, we got ceramic guns. Like, yo, what's going on, man? How do you 3D print a gun? Yo, that's yeah, the scariest that. shit in the universe, man. Talk about yo, I, I'm out of resin. What do you need resin for? Oh, man, <laughs> I got this, I got this idea for a super scope AR, man. Like, what? <laughs> yo, you walling. This yeah. is how crazy this world is, man. And like I said before, they will find a way. Yes. Yes. You could go search people posting schematics for these things, man. What the hell are we talking yeah. about? And the, and the, and the, and, the, and and also too, if I mean, other than other than the firearms, I mean, think about it: the Boston bombing, pressure cookers, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, explosive. And with, so with, with, with tools or equipment that you can get at any any store. Yeah, and yeah. and here and here's and here's another thing, and I'm gonna go ahead and shed a little light for you. In 2012. Um, I was in Anston, Alabama, because we're like the when I the hospital that I worked for, I worked at the county hospital. So they have a thing for for everybody. And we had people from all over the country, plus New Zealand, Guam, and Samoa. But basically we all had to take a domestic preparedness program. And we were there for a whole week. And one of the classes was we had to learn up and this was right after the Boston, the Boston incident. So when we walked into the room, it was called the Bombers Playground. And basically, they had rooms set up to where the scenarios from all over the years of how creative these guys have gotten. One was where a videotape was in a VCR. And it had like a weird title on it. So they said like, yeah, they were, they were on a manhunt for this guy. They, were, they, broke, they got it to the guy's home. They're looking around for him. And then they were just going, so they're trying to look for evidence. And then they saw like this videotape and it had like the little mermaid or some, some odd title. Mm-hmm. And before one of the detectives was about to pull the tape out, somebody said, stop. Basically the guy had it rigged to blow. You pull the, the VCR, the tape out, the VCR was the bomb. Wow. That is insane. Wow. Then, yeah. And then another scenario where they made a small bomb in a remote control. And what was the main igniter? Power. The power oh. button. That was a bomb. Another one was where the guy turned a regular thermos, coffee thermos, into a bomb. So when people are really smart and they're driven to have, you know, get creative, I mean, there's no, you know, no telling like when this will become a bomb. This already has been. It's been used as a bomb already. So yeah. So again, it's marathon. That's what was used. Yeah. So again, I remember correctly. Somebody got to tell me. It was on a timer. Yeah, it, it was, was on a timer. Yeah. But again, when people want to do harm, they will carry it out one way or another. True. Scary. Real segue, because Tony. Um, We'll wait for your broadcast because I know you want to come at it, you know, uh, much differently than what we discussed tonight, and that, that's that's fine. Yes. Um, 
I'll get into sharing. You know, and I hate to bring this up, but we have. <clears throat> They're coming to the Long Island. Mm-hmm. They announced Amazon announces the plan to open multiple no checkout grocery stores in New York State. Um, I mean, we see it everywhere in in every supermarket that we go shopping. You see the checkout, the you know, the self checkout is fully packed with people, and you'll see one or two um, cashiers. This is just this is stuff we we Tony we were talking about last year. You're going to raise wages? Okay, we'll just cut down on employees. We'll just cut down. Yeah, we'll cut down on employees. I mean, and you you think about it. You know, these positions range from almost sixteen and a half to seventeen dollars an hour, and some overnight positions as 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 well. And supposedly, you know, they're hiring, but at the same time. The focus is so heavy on auto- automation. Cut costs. That's a business aspect. Cut costs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we yeah. always talk about, we always talk about um, these artificial intelligence or these robots. They don't call in sick. Nope. No. They don't get tired. There's no health, no. There's no health coverage to, call, to cover for them. Jarvis no. is taking over. You know, and it's just... They're like, not going to unionize, no. Which is no, why. they're not going to unionize. <laughs> not shit. Not shit. <laughs> and, uh, Andrew, not shit. Hey, Andrew Yang was right. So what do yeah. you do with those 900,000 cashiers that are just out there? Because they they released these prototype stores. They've done it already in Seattle and Tennessee and, and other places. The question becomes, what happens when they start selling that technology to the other box chain stores? It's already happening. Walmart has it. Kroger has it. CVS has it. Walgreens has yep. it. Yep. McDonald's has it. It's already happening. Yeah. We said, and that was one of the biggest things we were taught when we were younger. If they raise wages, they're going to cut down on employees. Right. Let's yeah. be fair on this assessment, though. Most of you who have a city where a super Walmart opened Y'all know when they first opened at Super Walmart, all 30 registers had cashiers. Yes. Yes. And all 30 registers had lines. Right. All right. So yes. Put yourself in that situation. How long would you have done that job before you left? So from a business aspect, they're here temporarily. Yes, you're going to help with making profit. But the minute you start costing us, we're going to decrease you and place you with the automated because we already got the practice down of how the shift, how the shift should work properly. And what it's going to take to maintain it, as well as what the customer wants. So they're satisfied and we're satisfied. There's no loss in you. And on top of that, people have no patience nowadays. No. Yeah. Not yeah. at all. Yeah. That's what that's that's another reason why I think why they have like the kiosk where you just have yourself check out. Because nobody well, don't want to wait. Come at the same time to shop paydays. Yeah. First of the that month. is true. Oh, that is true. Days. Um, I can't fault any business for that. The only thing I could ever fault us as the consumer is how long we take in line. Y'all know good and damn well you better have your credit card in your hand. You know when you get to the register, it'll take that long to bring it out and ring up the damn numbers. You know what your PIN number is. You know how long it takes to write a check. You know where the PIN is for your checkbook, and then you can't find it when you get up there and you're holding everybody up who's in a rush to get home from work to take up the kids or ain't even been to the bathroom yet. That's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> All of that hey, is our Tranquilo, <laughs> tranquilo. You're because I've you been in line like this. Word. I don't know how to use this pin pad. Oh, well, we gonna... The express we line is low. As hell. Hell. <laughs> and somebody hey, 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 hey. You're, hey. You're, you're getting hotter than your jet fuel, man. <laughs> Word. Uh... Good call. I'm gonna get you tomorrow. <laughs> you're Yo, welcome. That's crazy, though. It's true. But it's though. the truth. For what we got to do as a consumer, we got to look at what some of this is happening that may be our fault that we don't realize. We already know what the business aspect is. Everybody knows in business you got to cut costs to increase profit. And you got to have a profit increase to expand. You have to. You can make money, but you always want to make more to do better. That's business one one. So what are we doing different as a consumer to keep it where we need to be? We're getting higher wages, but now we're having less jobs. We're going to cost ourselves. we got to figure out how to make it work. Well, 
to quote Thomas Sowell, just learn a trade and somebody will pay you to learn your skill. Yep. That pe- pe- person will pay for your skill. Yep. Learn well, a trade. What would they pay you? Yeah. But I mean, but like pick up, a, learn a trade, mm-hmm. learn a skill, mm-hmm. and somebody will pay you the money to, for, to utilize your talent. But will you be paid what you're worth? That's going to be another issue of it. We can all get a paycheck, but is it enough to survive? Okay, Depends. Depends on the skill set that you're yeah. providing. Yeah. Skill set, where you're at, and how much of a need your career is in your location. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because like my, my older brother, he does HVAC. He he does. Uh, oh, he's going. He, he's working for life. Yeah, he ain't got nothing to worry about. He ain't yeah. Worry. So yeah, he does commercial and residential AC work. He's he's comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Do you you do you ever see him? With uh, any sweat on his brow, talking about I can't cover this bill. No. There you go. The only time I ever seen him complain about money is when he made a stupid bet on a uh, 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 boxing legend, uh, the Hispanic guy, um, De La Hoya. De La Hoya. Jeez. He spent a thousand dollar. He bet a thousand dollars and lost on De La Hoya. That's the only time I ever seen him complain about money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't bad. That ain't bad. <laughs> so, but other other than that, I mean, he stays busy. He does he does a lot of local jobs. He does out of town jobs. There's even a couple where he had to fly out of state to do a job. Right. Um. So that's another thing. So it's like it's like HVAC, welding, because I'm I'm pretty much looking into it. And then there's medical, because you know. Um, and then, uh, Ted, your, your, your specialty, it's going to be in high demand because if everything's going, uh, AI and so you're, you're, you're definitely running the show. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something when you see all the jobs that have been lost across multiple industries past two years and, and you have to adjust Mm-hmm. And and that's 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 the real problem, you know. So when you look at when the local Amazon comes to your neighborhood and wants to put forth a distribution center, or you know, they've got to train you. Yep. And I'm not saying that's the end all be all, um, but you you have to look at these different industries, and you got to say, you, even in I tell you this much, the stuff that I was doing 20 years ago, I'm no longer doing today. Tony could talk about that with what, what he does with um, being a mechanic. You've had to adjust along the way. Yes, I've had to adjust mainly because of the technicalities. Um, this was one job. I was a part-time mechanic, but I was also a full-time customer service rep, if you will, when I worked mm-hmm. at a car track. I loved the job. I knew what I was doing, but I needed more. I went to this full-time. This is... Comfortable for me and what I wanted to do. Okay. Of course, I want more, but there's also more responsibility. And as you get older, to be retrained, and I saw that as an issue on um, Bill Maher a few years ago, 35 and 40 year olds. Yes. Jobs had to be retrained. This happening. And a lot of people don't, they can't believe that people are changing jobs at 35 and 40. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. 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 I think people need to acknowledge that when you are training somebody who was older than you or some people had to be retrained and you're not all that anymore, that is a big clash in society, people. Yes. Yeah. You're not trying to be called down to by a 22-year-old who's got a degree and you've got 20 years experience and you're going to knock him upside his mouth and take three of his teeth back with your fist. <laughs> <laughs> mentality yeah. of how you talk to people. It's the mentality yeah. of how you work with people. It's the mentality of how you coexist with people. Nobody does any one job and nobody doesn't check what you're doing. Right. Yeah. You've got to remember that. you got to acknowledge that. I don't care who you are and what you're doing. Somebody's checking your work. If it ain't your boss or your supervisor, it's going to be your IRS or somebody above yep. your corporation is ready to drop your ass. Must remember, you are in an at-will employment. Yep. You can lose benefits and a paycheck. Just like, like that. that. It's happened yeah. to me more than once, and I've had very secure jobs. I'm at job You give 12. the wrong answer to the higher-up supervisor or suit Type you're person, you're replaced. You're done. You're replaced. Yeah. It's happening. You ain't gonna think it's gonna, gonna happen because it hasn't happened to you yet. Yeah. You must have forgot. Even the president can be impeached. Y'all keep playing. 
<laughs> Y'all keep playing. That's true. Yeah. So, what has been, Brian, if you would share with you looking at new opportunities, what has been the most frustrating thing that you've run into in this current iteration of, of your search? Basically, walking away from something that I really enjoyed due to office politics. Mm. Because out of all the jobs I've had, that was my longest tenure. Okay. 14 years in the medical field in general. Helping people, taking care of people, patching up people, dealing with crazy ass people. It was rewarding because there's no other greater feeling than having someone give you a big old hug and say, thank you for taking care of me or thank you for taking care of my wife, my husband, my kids. Saving that was rewarding. Saving my that, life. Yes. Yeah, that was rewarding. But due to office politics, me walking away and then trying to refine myself. And that put me in a, that put me in a large depression because there's just something that I really, really enjoyed. And I walked away and then I tried going back in two years ago for paramedic and the job that I had, I couldn't focus because it was, I was worried about, man, am I going to pay my next bill or whatever? And so I had to walk away from that. So pretty much it's a tough pill for me to swallow, but pretty much I come into grips that my medical career is done. Now, moving forward, the only thing now, now that I just recently got hired, um, I mean, it's, it, yeah. So now it's like, all right, I made peace with it, but it's just, let me go back and try to find myself. And then when I get my, when I get a grip on pretty much, cause I don't plan on doing this job forever. Okay. But basically at my point in time, it's like, I need to find something that's a steady career, a necessity career where I don't have to worry about looking for another job for more money. Agreed. So pretty much what I'm thinking is once I get everything settled in with my new job and we have my schedule placed out, pretty much I'm going to like take up a welding. I'm going to go into welding because I've always been a fan of like shows like Monster Garage, overhauling, you know, because welders are hiring the band. And Tony, in your field, welders are crucial in your area. Mike Penn was good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. HVAC and welding, not going anywhere. Plumbing's not going anywhere. Electrician, Electrician. not going anywhere. Yeah. Carpentry. Carpentry, not going anywhere. Interior design, not going nowhere. Construction, Construction workers. Not going nowhere. Hospitality yeah. management, not going nowhere. All of you have jobs right now. Go. You're welcome. Yep. And, then also, and, and, then, and then also the too. Late night parents <laughs> and, then, and then also too, and also too, if people still can't figure stuff out, go in the military and, learn, and go from there. Yeah, take a trade there, yeah. Mind you, all those jobs we announced are also in the military. Yes. Yep. And on top of that, and on top of that, you get a steady paycheck. Right. A career. Career. A steady career. Career. Yeah, just career. 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 You get, career. Yeah. Yeah. Benefits. Security. Yeah. So Locked the only down, thing man. so the only thing you're sacrificing is your time. You're giving your time, you know, like you're gonna have less time with your family, depending on where you're at, or if you bring them with you. But if you're single, you got nothing, it's like, yeah, you're 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 dedicating most of your time. Yeah. Security and benefits are what you're looking for. You got and you got and, and help you and help you become a more disciplined, more you know, mm -hmm. more more a job better, better a job yeah. will do that. human being, yeah. A job yeah. will do that. Just to go out there and get something. Don't just sit back and wait for somebody to give it to you. Take what's out there, and the more you work, the more people will see you. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are working and living up under somebody else. Everybody wants their own. As long as you can acknowledge people are working and living up somebody else, living under somebody else before they get on their feet, then you can get your steps accordingly. Yep. Stop being all picky. you youngsters out there. Stop being picky. Stop yeah. being picky. No, no, be picky. I'm not, <laughs> mad. I'm not mad at picky. I mean, I wasn't at first, and then people wouldn't hire me. Then I started the job search will give you an aspect of what you really want to do. Yeah. Go out right. there and see what's available. If you can't find nothing, work something. As you work, people will pick you up. I have had plenty of job opportunities while I was working. My problem was I didn't know if I can do that job. I didn't want to be a bad, I didn't want to be a bad influence on my reference. I didn't want to lose that job and not be able to come back to this job. 
You got to right. go through all these steps as you're working. You also got to go through all these steps as you try to find something else. If I, is it green on the other side or am I better off where I am? I've taken jumps and chances and lost. Yeah. Be smart in what you do. Be wise in what you do. Be careful in what you do. I'm not going to tell you not to take a risk, but if you're not prepared for the consequences, you will look like the homeless did in the 70s in New York. You don't want that. You don't want that. Don't don't put yourself in a situation where you're asked out. Make sure you're just comfortable and secure no matter what. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Part of the language, but I'm gonna keep you out of jail and keep you off the streets. You're welcome. And and and, and that's important. Yes, that's important because you, you're dealing with these young bucks out here today, and it's like whew, I'm I'm not convinced. Yeah, I'm worried yeah. about y'all. I'm worried about them too. Some, people, some of y'all don't even want to get a money. driver's license. Some people I'm worried about y'all. Some of y'all don't want to leave the house. I'm worried about y'all. Yeah, save y'all's tails and get your parents off your butts. They do have a college <laughs> where you can play video games. All right, I only know of one, so it ain't gonna take all of you. A bunch of y'all got to get out the house and out the bedroom and put some clothes on besides pajamas and slippers. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's true though. True though. Yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike Patton wants to know who, who's the who's the one behind Mister B. That's oh, a, that's, that's Brooklyn Wren. That's Brooklyn Wren. She's a um, she's a model and a UFC ring card girl. Yes, sir. Mike is not paying attention to the broadcast. No, nah, he's not. <laughs> he's not. I'm gonna, move, I'm gonna move here to for a second. No, 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 like no move this. to your left. Move no. to your left. No. Move to your left. Move to your left. <laughs> A little bit more, yo. Yeah, yeah there, there you go. A little bit more. A little bit more. All right. Yeah, yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. There you go. Push the camera. Back <laughs> exactly. I'm moving to Brooklyn. <laughs> Easy, Mike. Easy. <laughs> I've been to Brooklyn. I haven't seen her yet. <laughs> He's like, well, y'all yeah, hating, fellas. Right. Uh, got a, a semi. Softball question. Uh, it's on. Mm. Does Econo Mode really <laughs> save you money on gas? Is it a myth? Is it something that's real? What do you think? We'll go around the horn. I'm gonna say yes. I throw myself out there. I drive a 2013 Chevy Equinox. It has 20 gallons and it's a V4. The first time I took a strong road trip in that vehicle, I was driving to Virginia. I lasted eight hours on one tank and it was an eco mode. Mm. I am a supporter of eco mode. I am a supporter of Chevrolet. I am a supporter of the Equinox. I will upgrade to the brand new all wheel drive right damn now. That little practical monster is worth the money. Yeah. Anything that has eco is going to save you, especially with gas at four dollars a gallon. In the states that aren't even paying that much money for gas, as compared to California, in a country that isn't paying as much for gas as compared to Europe, you might want to start looking into this type of a uh, vehicle, if you will. Gas isn't going to go back down. It has. I don't see it happening again. Wow. I will meet the country halfway at two fifty, and I'm grateful when I see two fifty now, which is a damn shame because we used to pay a dollar fifteen. You know what I'm saying? Many, many moons ago. Yeah. Ryan or Mr. B, what's your, what's your take on it? No, nah, I think it's helpful, man. Um, eco, eco-friendly vehicles, hybrid cars. I mean, you know, they help a lot, man. They help a lot. You know, before I used to clown people who own Priuses, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, you feel a lot of really stupid now, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and, and then you look at some of the people, the kids that got like 90 Civics, they ride in the gas, but look how much they pay for gas. You know what I mean? They keep, Compared they keep to a lot of other people. They keep fixing the hell out of those Civics. Yeah, <laughs> them, them Civics go on forever and ever and ever, as long as factory and aftermarket parts exist. Well, as long as aftermarket parts exist, they, they last oh, yeah. forever. But yeah, yeah, man, they're a big help. 
Big Hondas, Hondas, Hondas could because take a beating and still, still saving gas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I deal with some of them things, man. It's like it's crazy to see how many times people yeah. replace parts. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true. Yo, insanity, bro. It's insanity. Like, Wait, yo, I, I gotta replace my headers. That. Like, bro, I see it. It's like the, yeah, this is like your six set of headers you already broke. Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. This is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yo. Like, yo. They can afford the headers more than they can afford the new car. I think the question yeah. could be answered like many different ways. Because if you're looking, if you're pressing the eco mode mm -hmm. on your car, I think that's a fallacy. Okay. But but I think if you know, of course, if if you're out there driving the V12 right now, you're dying. You're mad. If you're yeah. dying, you got a diesel. You yeah. mad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know, and and, and I mean, this so with gas going up. So I shared with you earlier. I got 15 gallons. I don't even think it was 15 gallons. It was $87. Brian shared with me the other day. He said his his the fill up was 108. Almost 109. It was $108 and 81 cents. At for regular at $4.29. You're warming up. Don't come over here. You warm it up. Now, hey, now that, now that and, and earlier, and uh, earlier, and earlier, I went to go fill up, and I was at half a tank, uh -huh. and I paid sixty five to mm -hmm. fill up. Mm -hmm. But, but the gas station I went to it was four oh nine. Slight okay. a slight relief, but still annoyed. Come on, what, what's you mad about, Brian? Yeah, I drive a V6. Okay, it's a 3.7 liter V6, 305 under the hood, and I love it. What you mad about, Brian? Ooh. Christ. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and it's the price of the gas car. Facts. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Um, oh, I used shit. to have, right now, gas is 4.4 four on the dime around here where I'm at. That's not even the highest I've ever seen it. I used to drive a 2005 Escalade ESV. Ooh. It's a 30 gallon. When I would go to the pump or go to the gas station, I used to go to the register with 100, tell them I'm going to get a fill up. Sure, no problem. They expect to the change. I came back and I was going to give a little bit more. She looked at me and she looked, she said, The hell are you driving? I said, I got an Escalade. A full, a 30 gallon Escalade ESV used to cost me 120 to fill up. Yeah. And that was at four yeah. and a quarter. So right now we ain't even there yet, but we almost there. So a bunch of you with these off roads, big wheels, lifts, two fifties, twenty five hundreds, thirty five hundreds, Optimus Primes, ratchets, iron hides. I bet you got them in the garage, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you got them in the garage, don't you? It's hard to drive them vehicles right now. Um, yeah. and I don't see too many excursions anymore. I'm still seeing the Yukons and everybody, but some of them are hybrids. Did they stop making excursions? Yes. I want to okay. say yes. I think everything's going Denali, GMC, Yukons. I'm seeing Yukons. It'll be like the Yukon XL. I'm seeing Yukon XLs. I know the new Ooh. S coming out, which was a Suburban. The 2022s, they are yeah. still out there. So I want to say no. They, yeah, they no, did have some 2022. Matter of fact, yeah, I've seen the 2022 Yukon XL or uh, Suburban, but they are out there. Yeah. They're 30 and gallons. Then, and so then you multiply, got, and then, for those of you that don't understand that, multiply your gas price times 30. Find out how many tanks your vehicle is and start multiplying the gas price so you can adjust your finances because a bunch of y'all broke because y'all can't damn add and y'all damn sure don't think. Yeah. And then I and didn't then, realize uh, my truck was a 30 gallon. I thought it was a 20 gallon or a 25 until that needle didn't hit the F. By then, I was saying the F, and now I realize what the F means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you saying, Brian? Yeah, it's that reality, man. Yeah, because like now, like used car dealerships, because everybody's like buying used cars now. So a lot of used car salesmen are making a lot of commission mm -hmm. because everybody's trading in their luxury car or whatever because they can't swing it. You know, they can't swing the bill anymore. 
And, and you can't uh, write off gas and mileage and the taxes like you used to. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't under the current president. <laughs> hey, good looking, Mike. Thanks for, for stopping through. Big goes, Mike. All right, all right, man. He better do something big to us. I saw his tweet. He's about to be at the, uh, I think it was the Black Sportcasters Symposium. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he got invited to that. I think it was an ESPN event. So, Mike, I did see that. Big ups to you, bro. Congratulations. Keep right. it going. Yes, sir. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't have eco mode on mine. Mine's like a basic uh, F-150. But it's a it's a 3.7 liter V6. It's still good on gas. Yes. Um. So, yeah. I was but now V6 is good for driving around the U.S. for the most part. V8 is too much. V4s don't have enough power. Oh, oh, I, yeah, because like I could drive because I like I drove when I was down in the oil field and everything. I could get from from where I live in Richmond. I could get all the way past San Angelo, going towards Midland on three fourths tank of gas. You know, we don't know where the hell it is, right? Yeah, well, it's an eight hour drive. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's an eight hour drive, but I but I got but I get there close to where I only got to fill up when I when I get close right when I'm at a quarter tank, but for three quarters of the tank I could get from Richmond all the way out to close to Midland, like past highway. Eight. Highway is good for your vehicle. Yeah, yeah, because I I, I put it, I put it in cruise control. Yes, I love the cruise control right now with the city drivers killing people's cars. The highway you're fine. It's that city driving is gonna be yeah. Yeah, because yeah, on the freeway, I get like 22, 23 miles to the gallon. Which is standard and good. Yeah, and then in the city, I get 17. We got you, Mike. I got to get my YouTube back. Um, question came up about blackouts. Mm. What do we expect for the summer? Uh, here we go. I do remember this being an issue a lot in New York when I was a kid. Yeah. Extreme yeah. heat bringing about blackout, blackouts in the city. Um, they kind of want you to power down things, let the devices cool off, let everything kind of wind down before it overheats. On, on, on the soup, on the extremely warm days, they'll say, if you have like, you know, five ACs in your house, mm -hmm. yep. and maybe you turn off two. And that was the window units, not even the central. Right. Central, you're good. Um, I don't want to tell nobody to sweat themselves to death. I kind of want to recommend the old school tactic of leaving the AC on during the day, turning oh, it yeah. off when the sun's going down, and leave the windows open, and then mm -hmm. screen up and sleep with the window open at night. But then today's society, I don't want to tell nobody to leave no damn windows open. I don't no. care if floor. Somebody's <laughs> reckless ass is going to try to climb that bar. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Or, or, or start go start buying buying some fans and then just run the fans at night. That fan don't do it. Yeah, either. I've been there. That don't do it. The fan would be pushing around that hot air. Thank you. The fan no would be pushing. And so, I, I say that from experience. I say that from experience. Oh yeah, I, we when remember I as college, kids we living dorms, living in Queens. When we was in the dorms in college and the AC would go out, we had the fans rolling with the windows open and people still sleeping in their drawers. Nah, it ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> that ain't gonna cut. It. I'm just being real. That's or I need everybody or, working on AC units. Get up, get up on your AC units. Get up on your power suppress your surge suppressors. And then yeah, you yeah. issue right here. No, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people over here to get them solar panels. You yeah. see how that work out. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I keep hearing advertisement. If you're a homeowner, like like they'll actually pay you to have solar power. You. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Now that like, they got control of it, because before they used to fine you if you got in if it wasn't government regulated. Now that it's regulated, they're gonna hook you up. Yeah. Yeah, they pay you. Yeah. And if you have a select um number of, you know, like wattage, like power, mm -hmm. they buy your power from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's insane, man. But that is the future that we solar from. powers. Um, I do see it as eco friendly. I have not seen any problems with the solar cells in the event that they died or they had to recycle them as an issue. I am noticing, yeah. I know in this state, they're building a lot of solar farms. Yeah. Um, mm. It's getting very huge. And Brian, your state, I think, would have a phenomenal exponential change in energy in the energy crisis. If well, they did. well, out, out in West Texas, uh, when I go past, 
San Angelo going towards Midland, there is a large, I don't know the amount of acres, but it's thousands and thousands of windmills. Yeah. You say windmills, I say solar panels. I know about the windmills in Texas. Texas is yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, there's some out there in the Gulf too, right? They got the windmills. Yeah, there yeah, there, there, yeah. There's some, there's some houses here with already with solar panels, but I'm just saying, like, going out west Texas because it's just nothing but desert out there. Yes. But yeah, there's like the the turbine windmills. Mm -hmm. So we got that to keep us afloat, and then you know, also too, we're by the Gulf of Mexico, so mm -hmm. we generate that water. That's right. Using the hurricane <laughs> winds, you only fooling nobody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn. I, I I spoke with someone about solar this week. I spoke with a company. It's reputable. Um, it's the biggest, or excuse me, it's the largest solar provider, Sunrun. Um, I spoke with them, and they recently, well, a couple of years ago, they purchased uh, Vivint Solar. So another big problem. V I V I N T. Yes. They got a solar power. Yes. Yes. So I spoke with them, and we had maybe three or four conversations, and we talked. You know, uh, ultimately they wanted to see the P S E and G bill. Yeah. You know, all the yeah. conversation was good until they see the bill, and they could see. Okay, let me see your usage over the last 12 months. And then based on that, that's going to be your plan. Now, I challenged the gentleman. I challenged him because I said, uh, so let's say they said for you, Mr. Hicks, you've used uh, 12,000 kilowatts over the last year. And I said, okay. I said, however, you got to remember Based on COVID, everyone was at home. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, I don't think this is a true number. This this represents, I said, what we should do is look back to, you know, pre-COVID, and then we can take these numbers and massage them. And then somewhere there's a that there's that, you know, in the middle, that sweet right. spot that you that you can find. Yeah. But it's it's totally what you said. Um, you know, some of these companies are fly by night, like they just opened up a storefront or something like that. But um, the what they're offering now, full lease, you don't pay a dime. You don't pay anything. Would it be better if they did the, re the numbers from the past two years or would it be better if they used the previous numbers before the pandemic, like you said? I think you take a little bit of both. I would think so. And, and you massage yeah. those numbers together. Uh -huh. Yeah, that makes and you sense. get like you know, hey, when no one was here and you were only using eight thousand kilowatts, don't charge me for the thirteen. Maybe put it at a oh, as far as the charge. I thought they were looking at the uses to determine your plan. Yes, and you can have up to that. Right. I think we're going to want up to that again for the winter. Right. So it really comes down to what are you saving? You're saving on that delivery charge that you get. So if you, you look at your bill and your bill is broken down, whoever your, your energy provider is, you're going to look at the first part. It's the, the delivery um, charge. That goes away because you basically become a customer. Yeah. And you're going to make that money back anyway. And they give you most of these companies that tell you, hey, you're going to make money. You're going to do this. Yes, you will do it, but there's certain periods of during the year. It might be once, it might be twice, where you can do like a true up. Mm -hmm. And that way, everything that's in your bank, you give it back. So you can clear out your bank because ultimately, when you do this, when you do this, you're going to be receiving two bills, a solar bill, and then your... <laughs> and then your your standard electric bill. So they're two different bills still. Still. However, you won't be getting uh, any major bill coming from your electric company. You'll just be paying for the connection charge. Yeah. Because how much and that's only like 14 bucks. Okay, I can live with that. Um I just looked it up. They don't have it in this state. Right. 
I have heard of Vivint. They got the home security system. Mm -hmm. They are pushing so, real hard down here. Um, AT and T fiber optics is pushing real hard down here. I don't know who fiber optics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fiber, AT and T. Remember, they got here about two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Man, Longer than that. They started hit. Well, they just got here. At oh, least okay. Where I'm at, but they're starting to have problems as of last year, I believe. Mm. But they said it will lighten fast. So. Just ultimately, you, you just got to be smart when if you do go solar, don't I, I'm, I'm just saying don't jump the shark. Don't be so quick to, to jump out there. You, you talk with a couple of companies, you know, like with any anything, you get two or three bids. Yes. Yeah. You get two or three I, bids. I, I want to thank you for that because I was going to jump on solar when it started. That was the first. And you can. You can. But do your homework first. Look yeah. at. Look at your, your electric bill, your energy bill, but I want you to run it back before COVID. Of course. And those numbers are going to be night and day. For me, it hasn't been. No? No, because I turn off the lights during the day. The TV okay. The biggest yeah. kicker, I think the biggest thing that'll be an issue more than the power bill will be your Wi-Fi bill. I think everybody's Wi-Fi bills are higher. Yeah. I do think that's a bigger issue than electricity, Wi-Fi, food. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. probably water went up for a lot of people. Some people who have gas, I don't have gas, I used to, but I think Wi-Fi, food, and water bills might have been the highest, and that would have been a big change. you got to add right. all of those up to the home utilities, if you will. You know, yeah. and just remember this, that it's always going to be much more expensive to heat your home versus cooling your home. January and February utility bills, I've seen a lot in the South, are the highest. Mm -hmm. The holidays, yes. the winter, the coldest month. Even the hottest month isn't as bad as the coldest month for the right. utility that I've seen. So I'm going to say January and February power bill. You probably need to see what solar energy does around that time. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a big one because it's more cloud cover as well. Yes. It is that's, the that's the other deal. So yes. I would suggest sitting and talking with people about the solar. I think it's a great idea. Yes. You know, if, if you can, you know, but the number has to be right for you. And there's always going to be that expectation that you should be saving more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to give you a number and you're going to be like, that's it? So where's the incentive to, to do this thing? Clean energy. Yes. Less radiation. Yes. Yeah. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Less radiation. Clean you're right. Um, less electrical fires. But most people are concerned about the dollars and cents. The dollars and cents are going to come in, but you also got the safety hazards otherwise. You got right. to put it on top of the house. You got to get it installed on top of the house. We don't have to worry about antennas no more because we got cable. Right. Now we don't yep. have to worry about the power company because we got nature. Yep. Yeah. As of right now, we don't know what's going to happen when solar panels aren't any good anymore. What are they doing with them? How are they recycling them? How are they dumping them as far as the waste after? So it's like we're recycling first started. Just make like, sure. Yeah, but the waste was a problem. Just make sure the company that you're dealing with, um, whatever plan that you're signing up for, 10-year plan, if you're purchasing, if you're leasing, it's a 20-year plan or 25-year plan, make sure the warranty that you get covers that same cycle. Agreed. Yeah. You know, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So that was the stuff that that uh, I learned this week. And like I said, good conversation. Rock solid company. Um, you know, you just get to the point where I'm like, okay, it's sixty bucks a month. I'm in the middle of a movie. <laughs> Not that type of movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Sound like that just locker room on that one broadcast in the interview. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nah, I was watching this French movie the other day. Yeah, we know. And I it's saw it. Yeah. <laughs> woo woo. Oh, oh. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Yo, I won't. I don't even want to talk about the COVID-related scams because I think Brian will lose it. Uh, I'll keep my composure. <laughs> Go ahead. I got five dollars that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Yo, all right. Oh no. COVID scams. Uh, where are you? 
everybody turn up the extra tabs at Windows on their computer so we don't hear that no more. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all. Oh, I was, ah, I said, uh-oh. Oh, oh the shit. tennis match. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. All right. So COVID nineteen scams. Brian, don't comment. Because I know right there that's an opening for you. You like okay. you okay. right, I'll, I'll, I'll mute I'll mute my, my, my mic. I'll mute my mic. You smell me. Uh, <laughs> so ten COVID related scams that you should know to avoid fraud. Tony, uh Rely on you and Joe. So scammers are using telemarketing calls, text messages, social media platforms, and door-to-door visits to perpetrate COVID-19-related scams. So here are some things you should know so that you don't fall victim to these frauds. Uh, COVID-19 vaccines are free. If anyone charges you for it, Help signing up or the shot itself, it's a scam. But, hmm. but, but Tone, what do we say to the people when Biden was like, hey, I'll pay you $100 or I'll, you know, like a reverse of this. I'll pay you $100. I'll buy you a beer. You get a, a, a Chick fil A meal. Um, you said vaccines are free. How many people do we know where to pay for vaccines? Say it again. It says vaccines aren't free. How many people do we know that paid for vaccines? Oh, I don't know anyone. I think when it first came out. I know people are paying for COVID tests. I know that much. Was it the yeah. test or was it the vaccine? No, it was, it, it was a test. Started. It was a test? Yeah. A test. Now the tests are free. Yep. The tests are free, but I tell you this much, when I went to Mexico... We had to pay $30 a piece for our COVID test so we can get back to the United States. Yeah, when I bought mine at CVS, it cost $30 for a set of two. Um, Here's my problem. Number one, COVID-19 vaccines are free. If anyone charges you for help signing up for the shot itself, it's a scam. Yeah. Number two, you can't buy the COVID-19 vaccine anywhere. It's only available at federal and state-approved locations. Those two to the wrong person would be confusing and seem contradictory. Always talk with your doctor or healthcare professional before you try any product claiming the treat. Absolutely. Number three is a given. Let's stop number one and number two right now. Number yeah. three is a damn given. Number three should be number one. <laughs> number three should be number one. Number four, the FDA advises consumers to be cautious of websites and stores selling products that claim to prevent, treat, or cure COVID 19. Number four is duh. We need the hashtag D-U-H up under that bad boy. <laughs> Number five, don't post your COVID, don't post your vaccination card to your social media account. Someone could use that information for identity for theft. I would agree to that because it's your name and your dates on there. Your name was enough to get you jacked. And some of y'all knuckleheads out here did do that. Yes. Y'all did. Yeah. Y'all might well, want to no control on. because wanting to be first, no control. Putting the word um, out and showing that they did it. I got yeah. that, but be careful with that. They don't have any other information on there. I looked at mine. I was about to go in the back and look at mine again, but I don't remember anything crazy on there. Number six, right now there are no official plans to create a national vaccine verification app or certificate or passport. If someone asks you for personal information or money to get a national vaccine certificate or passport, that's a scam. We got to stop right there. That was an issue last year. They were working on that. Mm-hmm. They have got to verify who they are because passports used to have a vaccinations, some type of vaccination verification on it. Yeah. They did used to have one on there. So I want to, I want to say we need to look into that more. Um, the app, Apple had a place on your phone where you could put your vaccination card in the wallet. Yes. I need, we need to look into that a little bit more. So that's going to be contradictory to some people mm-hmm. based on that information that was out. Number seven, check with airlines, cruise lines, and event venues about their vaccine verification or negative testing requirements. Yeah, 
the what's the name of that stadium in Vegas for the Raiders? Uh, 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 I was gonna say Reliant, yeah, not Reliant, yeah. but I Allegiant. Know, Allegiant, Allegiant, Allegiant. Last year when the season started, they were gonna they were telling people Allegiant. you couldn't come Allegiant in unless you were vaccinated and you had to provide proof. I that may be an Allegiant. issue to anybody who hears that. Just just for me to you, Ted. These are the things that I would say people will come about. Uh huh. Since it's on your site. I'm just letting you know these are things that are going to come at you. Yeah. Number eight, according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, fake and unauthorized at-home testing kits are popping up online as scammers take advantage of the spike in demand. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be a personal testament to this. The USPS was sending home test kits. I haven't heard a problem with them. CVS was giving you home test kits. I haven't seen a problem with them. Just so you know, both were free. And as of right now, the USPS is kicking out, I think it's eight more tests. That you could re-register for? I think so. Yes. So as of right now, you can have two, four, 12 sets of home test kits for COVID. I haven't seen a problem with those. Number nine, some masks may not... Thank you. Appreciate it, Jojo. <laughs> some masks may not be legitimate or officially meet international standards. The CDC estimates that 60% of N95 masks, the most widely available respirators that meet an international standard sold in the U.S. are fake. Are you kidding me right now? That's fun. That is. Ah. I'm not. I'm not surprised by that. Though. That's in a way. crazy because the K95 masks. The only thing that I would say would be fake about them is some have. I don't have one with me right now. Some are just the mask to cover your mouth, and then they got the one to cover your mouth with the little thing on the side. Yeah, a bunch of the ones with the thing that's not on the side. That may be the ones that they're talking about. Number one, number two. International standard. What is the international standard? Some masks may not be legitimate or officially meet the international standard. Let me look this up. Let me see what the international standard is. Uh, CDC estimates to 60%. I'm guessing the international standard is not N95, KN95, um, N94. Looking it up right now. Give me one second. KN95 International Standard is the one that doesn't have the crunches on the side. Remember right. when they first came out, they had like a little box on the side? Yes. Yeah, they had a little Those box. The little was that like a, an additional filter? I yeah. think it was like an additional filter, yeah. They don't, the but some of them you couldn't filter. replace. Yeah, you couldn't replace it. Once you finish that, you threw it away. Yeah. A lot of us have a problem where we were, we were replacing the mask to save money. And also because due to lack of availability of having a reliable one. Yep. Uh, Dream Electric Sheet, nice blade reference to cheap imports relabeled. Oh, Helen's in the house. Oh, hey, Helen. The hey. cheap imports relabeled, they don't filter out the required 95% of particles. The cheap N95 mask? I have not heard that. Nice blade runner reference. Okay, I didn't see that. Well, I, I, I got to watch that movie again. Okay, yeah, the KN95 one that doesn't have the filter on the side. Is the good one. That's the international one. What else we got? Number 10. When you're looking for pandemic related help, start with sites like coronavirus.gov or USA.gov coronavirus. That's just for us in the US. What about on an international level, which is what the problem is because we got a lot of international travelers right. that carry, transmit, and also die from it. I understand the U.S. standards. All of us are doing that with CDC.gov, NIH, uh, John Hopkins, all of that. But we also got to look at international standards to cover this pandemic properly, in my opinion. Domestically, a lot of the countries are doing what they're supposed to do. We got an international issue that I don't hear being addressed enough, except for social distancing and masking, which is probably all they can do. Okay, Brian did good. I owe him $5. But I'm gonna give him yeah. because I saw him, I saw him changing his face. I saw him looking down. I know he was hiding his reaction. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> there have been documentaries made about it. Okay, thank you, Helen. And I have yeah. seen the uh, fake ones on a lot of sites. Any and every mask they were selling, and they were selling like crazy. People just yeah. want you. I got her on that. <laughs> I got her on that. Flimsy I got joints, on that. man. Yeah. So so I I use Zelle, Cash App, and PayPal. Ah. None of mine worked. And as you moved your face and you hit it, it didn't count. No, 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 no. I didn't say anything. 
You didn't have to. That was the thing. No, 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 no. No, no. You said, you said. reaction. Was it say anything or say a reaction? You said say anything. You're like, Brian's going to talk. I know he's going to do it. And I said, I'll mute my mic. That doesn't mean you didn't say anything. I got you, bro. Don't worry about it. I got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got you. Oh, uh, my God. You don't know that they're fake. They're being uh, so legit mask. Oh. Oh, you don't know until you got it. I got it. Until you mm. get it. Because <laughs> it's got to have, it's, that box. It's gotta have my yes. signature to be an authorized mask. <laughs> and you got some good old loose leaf paper. You. you got loose leaf paper spray painted blue. I I already I, I, I broke up with COVID nineteen. We're done. We're broken up now. My new love right now is the monkeypox. <laughs> gotta get your mask, get your vaccines. I gotta stay relevant because I got this Malibu house that I'm looking at to retire. <laughs> you, got the, you got the money for the house. You got the money for the house. Oh, oh but God. yeah, but I need to buy four more because right now Bernie Sanders is beating me. Hard. Oh, it ain't, shoot. it ain't just burning. Just like it ain't just COVID. It ain't just burning. Right. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, hey, fine, so we're going to end this broadcast, mm -hmm. but I guess we'll shoot over the airtime. Yeah. 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 Um, on, what's on each of your schedules for the weekend? I'll go first. Uh, tomorrow, the people I'm living with, um, they're hosting because they're, they're my buddy's nephew, you know, their grandson graduated high school. So we're having a post graduation over here since we have a pool. So it'll be a pool party. Now the only now the only complication is what are we cooking? So am oh, I going to be on the? You got that cover. We ain't even worried about. No, it. no, 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 no. I mean, I'm, no, I don't even know. I'm like, are we doing burgers? Are we doing wings? Are we doing? Am I? Gr what am I grilling? Or am I grilling? And then on Sunday, my my brother Sam. Apparently, my niece is pregnant again. Congratulations, Uncle. Uncle. Yeah, Uncle Brian. Times. Uncle Brian. Uncle Brian. Uncle Brian. <laughs> So yeah, so I gotta drive it at like almost an hour to get to, to that baby shower. And also too, my nephew wants to buy my firearm in exchange for because he's bored. Well, he wants to buy my firearm and I want to use the money that he's gonna give me and buy my brother's firearm. Ah. <laughs> we just got finished talking about guns. Look at what you're doing. I know. No, 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 no. But he has the forms. He has the forms, bill of sale. Okay. Bill of sale. Mm -hmm. So that way I sign off on it and That's then I enough. mail it. Just mm -hmm. point your cousin to your brother and say, okay. Instead of being a middle man. <laughs> yeah. Because that's yeah, how the, 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 the money transfers the buyer market. <laughs> I'm yeah, but not buyer market value, Joe. No, but the, the thing about it, the thing about it is too, like down here, like the way my brother does it, he does it by the book. So if he were to sell his gun, we have to go to an actual gun dealer and do the sale that way. Ah, okay. But I, but, but he has like he has the basic form just like I do. The bill of sale is like the serial number of the gun, blah 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 blah. But then I have to present it when we go to the gun when we go to the gun dealer. That way, all the records are changed and everything's updated. Mm, okay. See, that's being responsible, ladies and gentlemen. That is. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, Joe, what I'm you got going in the on? databases. Mm. Me? Yeah, you. Man, bro. Joe. Two weeks I've been out. Two weeks I've been out. Um, I'm back on here. I got to catch up with a lot of things. Um, as far as like events go, um, I show up back to church on Sunday, uh, yeah. for the for the Saturday. You know, we're gonna be watching some MMA. Roly Romero and Javante Tank Davis are gonna be fighting. Um, we're gonna catch that. Yeah, that's a big deal. Lara's gonna be on the um co-main, so I'm gonna watch that as well. Um, what else? You know, you got wrestling. AEW's gonna be on Sunday. Yeah, double or nothing. Watch that. Monday, I'll probably do like a catch up. So. I'll probably be on streaming through YouTube and Twitch and here. 
all day to talk about <laughs> the two weeks of what I missed streaming. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna talk about. Then I'll catch up all that during the week of streaming. Yeah. Um, talk to catch up with everybody else, and then that's that, man. For the for the most part, well, yeah, that's what it oh. is. Tony, they're dying, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, and also a reminder: Monday is Memorial Day. Yes, yes, sir. No so work. Everybody's having, everybody's having an extended weekend. No work. Yeah, not everybody, but be responsible. Oh, definitely. Tony, not you said everybody. not everyone. I've been active duty. We didn't get Memorial Day off. Oh, man. Uh, I've been a regular service. civilian. They don't necessarily get Memorial Day off. If you got a holiday, your ass is lucky. Mm. Military don't get the day off because of what we got going on and right. or because we got right. to provide national defense. I'm going to need right. y'all to give our deceased defenders their proper respect. Yep. Yes. And it also appears that Helen has a birthday. Yes. Oh, big birthday. Ah, her 40th birthday. You said her age on the air, really? Uh, Brian, why would Brian. you say that? She loves me. Brian getting sniped. Yes. <laughs> Damn, Brian, Brian that's on you, bro. Adam. That's on like, you, bro. Yeah, I'm going to get Wallace. You gonna get a boot to the balls? <laughs> I'm, gonna get, I, I'm gonna get Wallace. <laughs> you get a boot to the balls. Oh my god! Get your face painted. Uh, Brian. It was good knowing you, man. Yeah, it was yeah. Good it, guy, it really was. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy the conversation. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, her forty forty first. Oh, oh, your forty first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Okay, so I yep. I am older. Yep. I am older than her by a few months. All right. Cool. A boot to, boot the, to ball. the balls. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey right, I said fortieth, so that made you feel younger. Ish. Yeah. This guy, he had to put the ish. ish. He was good, but he had to say the ish. Uh. God, Brian, you just don't make your situations any better. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> uh, um, man, I'll well, be broadcasting tomorrow. I do plan on doing my broadcast tomorrow. I'll probably be broadcasting a lot this weekend on StreamYard, Restream. I'm going to work on vocal. I do yeah. have Twitch Studio figured out. Um, Twitch Studio does have issues and issues and glitches. I'll be doing a lot of troubleshooting, so you'll be seeing me popping up, working stuff out, talking with people, asking questions, looking like I'm talking to myself, but I ain't. Right. Um, I did go out today. I'm gonna take it easy. Um, I did tell Jason's mom bring him by this weekend if she didn't have any plans. He did want to go to a circus. She's gonna take him, and he might be here, so me and him might trip out for a little bit for a lot of people that miss. Him when he's up in here with me. Um, you can find me on airtime, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and everybody else has been quiet for the most part. So that's primarily where I'll be at more than anything. But Ted, good seeing you. Appreciate it. Being good here, let's do this. Joe, Joe, good seeing you, Brian. You Weekly yes. basis. Yes. Joe, I yes. want to get a one on one interview with you. You pick the day and the time. So we can talk about oh, whenever whenever it's comfortable with you, you know how I work, man. Men's health. I work on I work on I work on whatever's comfortable with you. You give me a time, I'll say, All right, cool, man. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Let's do it. Definitely. But are you covering the you are are you going to be streaming this weekend or are you working if anything, through it? It'll probably just be the Roly Romero Javante Davis fight. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. Joe, can you give us any insight really quickly on is there an issue with um, Mayweather's camp and Tank Davis? It's a funny dynamic. It's a funny dynamic between Mayweather and Tank Davis because Mayweather wants to look out for Tank. Like, that's his guy. But Tank is kind of like one of these dudes where it's like, I don't want to listen to you. I want to try to do my own thing. 
they kind of have like that big brother, little brother dynamic almost where Mayweather try to bully him a little bit into doing certain things. And he's kind of like to hell with this dude. Um, but they kind of all right. Um, in that fight, you got Roley and Roley's one of Mayweather's guys as well. You know what I mean? Um, who's on the come up and they're trying to test him. It should have been Roley versus Ryan Garcia, but Garcia got injured. You know how that went. And so you got Davis. Now they're trying to, I think all it is is just a fill in. Tank will probably beat this dude up, Roley. Okay. Um, Roley does move pretty well, um, for himself. He got a lot of KOs and TKOs, you know what I mean? But is against people we never really heard of. Right. We never heard of none of those names that he's fighting. So Tank will more than likely go in there, beat this Yo, man Joe, up. Can I be honest with you? What's up? I've never heard of none of the names you've been saying. <laughs> 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 you've never heard of Javante Davis. Javante Davis, Tank Davis, man. He's a little dude, a little pit bull type cat. Man. Yes. Yeah. Bad, bad man. Bad man, man Javante Davis is. Shut your mouth. Yeah, you got Roly Rolando Romero, man. So they call him Roly Romero. But Roly, little Roly, man. Roly's a little, little clown dude, man. But he, he moves, as I said, he moves really well. But I think Roly just needs that exposure. So they're going to get that fight. Depending on how Roly look, if Roly look good against him, mm -hmm. he'll get those bigger names. Floyd know what he's doing. Floyd he's looking to know. boost up somebody while boosting up his main guy and his main guy's tank. Gotcha. Youngest dude to win a title, winning multiple titles, flooring cats, doing big, good performances. Yeah, man. And hopefully we can see Roly versus Garcia. Garcia's supposed to be fighting Jojo. Was it Jojo Diaz sometime soon? No, 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 no. They booked them against Isaac Cruz. My bad. That's what happened. That's the last guy Javante Davis fought. The mofo that don't have a neck. Yeah, that guy. Mm. Yeah, the mm. mofo who just who just put away um, Yoriokas Gamboa. That guy. Even though Gamboa was mad old, but still, you know what I mean. Gamboa had his time. Let's let's let's, let's, let's be for real there. But um, yeah, man, that's what's going on. All right. Yeah. I uh, want well, to definitely thank you guys. Yep. And we got to do it again. Um, mm -hmm. Yo, it. I'll hit you with the date, but either we'll do this. I think Thursday nights work. Um. Yes. Because you go on Friday with Glick. And your mic. Yes, no, sir. not Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Okay. Tuesday, Tuesday's actually the best night, but Thursdays will be good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can do Thursdays. Brian, what, what, what are you good with? Tuesdays or Thursdays? Uh, either or. Okay. Um, now, yeah, depending on when, when I get off of work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, uh, you, if you want to. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Because, like, the, the shift they want me to work would be like 10 30 in the morning till whenever the job's done. Okay. So I could be doing eight, nine, ten, twelve hours. Don't bother me none. Mm. I'm if numb. If you want to go, yeah. If you want to go Tuesday, let me know. Okay. I'm good with Tuesday. I just gotta watch Tough. That's all. Tough is at nine. Right. It's well, Tuesday is normally Mayans. Mayans is about to be over. So, uh, for those that do not know, Tough is the Ultimate Fighter. Yes, sir. I was just about to put that out there. <laughs> Team Pena versus Team Nunes. 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 Team yeah, Pena versus Team Nunes. Oh. So far, they're pretty good. Good season. Yeah. Good season so far. Yeah. Come on, Usman's brothers in there. Yeah. They're pretty good. All yeah, right. Man. So I'll see you guys at airtime. Tony, yeah. we're going to be in your room or I'm Joe, we're going to be in your room I'm or Brian? I'm see where I'm at in a minute because I was just reading some, some of the messages and a couple other ones that I had. Um, I did have checked my emails, but I can be over there soon. Yeah. Yeah. I just sent y'all a message too. All right. Okay. Joe, you Joe, you're welcome. Thank you. Yo, Brian and these <laughs> Thanks pictures. Thanks for having boy. me. Brian Dude. as well. Yeah. Dude. Dude. <laughs>